let's remember Libya has been divided into two rival governments for the past year. It had botched elections at the end of 2021. So it's really been a series of political problems, one on top of another. So Batili is presenting his proposal to address these problems and try to resolve them and, and chart a way forward. Five months have passed since the new UN Special Representative for Libya, Abdullahi Batili, took office in Tripoli. And at the end of February, the plan he unveiled at the Security Council envisaged uh, creating a, what he called a high-level steering committee that should uh, help uh, various Libyan factions reach an agreement on a way forward to have elections. Essentially, his plan amounts to proposing that the country go straight to elections by the end of 2023 without necessarily passing through an interim step, which others demand, which is to have a negotiation for a new unity uh, government. The plan didn't really have many details, except for saying that this committee will be tasked with, you know, finalizing election laws, agreeing on an electoral pact, resolving security issues, and other outstanding matters that will uh, arise. Now, from the outset, I think the, the, the proposal uh, is facing um, some obstacles. The first is that there are factions in Libya that are opposed to the UN taking the lead. Most importantly, the parliament and the rival assembly called the State Council in Tripoli, they argue that they should have the lead and will have the lead and see no need for an alternative mechanism uh, in the form of this uh, high-level steering committee that Batili proposed. Um, the second problem is that member states, foreign countries, some foreign capitals, uh, have not given their support to Batili's plan. Uh, so this means that the Security Council is, is divided, not fiercely divided, but divided enough not to give him a full-throated support, which is what he would need in order to overcome those divisions in the country. This third obstacle he, he is facing and will face more forcefully in, in the near future um, are those constituencies that say that you cannot go to elections without first unifying the executive before you know, having a unity government. Now, Batili and uh, member states uh, such as the US and most European states fully support the idea of not having negotiations for a new unity government because they think that that is a, a, a waste of time, B, will not necessarily provide the sort of legitimacy to the institutions which they think elections can have. Yet, in Libya, many, and especially the two assemblies who have their own roadmap, say that you cannot have elections in such a divided country because there are no guarantees that the implementation of the election laws and the framework is, uh, is fair on both sides. Fourthly, the biggest obstacle is that we're still lacking really incentives for Libyans to go to elections. And, and part of the problem is that the current uh, state of division in the country still appears to uh, benefit key stakeholders who are having you know great financial windfalls from from the state of affairs even more so since the outbreak of war in um, in Ukraine uh, which has compelled Western actors to try to increase oil and gas production from Libya so this is a, a major obstacle because you have actually financial incentives to keep the situation as it is, rather than to risk it all uh, by, by supporting elections. Now, whether the, the UN will be able to implement um, its proposal, actually turn it from just words into an operational plan, will in large part depend on how uh, Batili uh, is able to navigate these four obstacles that are already looming large uh, in front of him in Libya.